We're moving on to item 7C. Leslie. Uh, yes, this um, is an ordinance to uh, uh, declaring a uh, property, a uh, blighted property, and authorizing uh, city staff to take measures to abate the blight, in this case, demolish the building. Um, the city has a fairly long history with regard to this property. Um, I understand from our files that there have been complaints dating back to 2007 about the peeling paint, rotting siding, unauthorized use, um, and so on. Back in 2013, the city looked at declaring the property a blighted property and authoring, authorizing staff uh, to take steps um, at that, the similar steps at that time, so demolition. Um, and part of how the city got to that point then was that contact with the owner of the property was incredibly difficult. Um, we had a lot of trouble reaching the owner of the property um, and trying to communicate with them and get a plan out of them. But at the last minute, the property changed hands. I understand there was kind of renewed hope that uh, the property would be cared for by the new owners. And so it kind of fell off the city's radar. Um, but back in August of 2016, the city again uh, began attempting to reach the uh, now current property owner. Um, and the deputy building official sent several notices. Uh, the property was unfit for human habitation, and the notices uh, required the owner to contact the city to further discuss the property. And um, eventually I worked with the deputy building official to secure an administrative search warrant to go in and look at the property and do a more thorough inspection um, in order to update our notices that were being sent out to the property owner and also to get an idea of just how far uh, things had deteriora deteriorated since 2013. Um, staff decided to initiate the process to have council declare the property a uh, blighted property. Um, uh, a, um, and under state law, the property owner had uh, 30 days to respond with a blight abatement plan that the city deemed accessible, acceptable uh, towards the end of that 30-day period, uh, so in late May. The owner did come to the office and discuss the property uh, with me and uh, Chris Brown, the city attorney, and the deputy building official, but didn't ever submit an actual plan. Um, and then on Monday, I met again with the property owner. and She does say she's begun taking some steps uh, to get the appropriate release letters that she needs and the permits and so on to have the property demolished. But my understanding is there hasn't been any sort of contract with any company to come do the actual demolition um, or any set dates on when demolition would begin. Um, at this point, staff is interested in basically nailing down a reasonable timetable on this. Um, while we're glad the owner has finally made some contact with the city, it's been four years, give or take, since they bought the property without any signs of work being done. Um, so staff would like to go ahead and have the property declared a blighted property and get the authorization to um, demolish the building. If it turns out the property owner does you know, suddenly move forward with demolishing the building herself anyway, uh, that's great, then we don't have to do it. Um, but if the owner is going to do that, we'd like to be sure that the process moves along quickly. Um, so going ahead and approving this ordinance would help essentially hold the owner's feet to the fire, so to speak. <clears throat> um, alternatively, if council would prefer, there's always the option of holding off on this step, instructing us to try and work with the property owner uh, for some period, whatever council deems reasonable. Um, if the city does end up demolishing the building, we estimate the cost of the actual demolition to be somewhere between $6,500 and $9,500 for the demolition itself, um, as well as an asbestos inspection. And then depending on the results of the asbestos inspection, there may be asbestos abatement costs, anywhere from $3,000 to $25,000, depending on uh, exactly how bad the uh, asbestos is. Um, Whatever the final cost the city incurs in the demolition of the building would be filed as a lien on the property. Um, and I should mention, I believe the owner is here tonight and may have additional uh, information about what steps she's taken to address the issue, if council is interested. Yeah. Yeah, the uh, property owner is here. She? Yeah, yeah, if you'd like to come up. Yeah. If you, if you wish. Uh, is that, so she understood, well, we'll find out. Um, I, I want to say my English is not very good, so probably I cannot understand all of that. Yeah, just, uh, um, I came here just to want to uh, explain. Um, I already started, uh, like, apply uh, the permit and uh, 
get a. I don't know how to say it. So, um, yeah, we try. I try to find my friend uh, help me, like uh, finish doing that in about uh, one or two months. Okay. I just want to make sure that she. I, I definitely want to make sure, ma'am, that you understood. When, when he was explaining the asbestos costs, and that would be an additional cost. So you could be looking at a potential um, estimated 35? Um, it's about anywhere from 3,000 to 25,000. That 25 plus potential, it depends on how 10. much asbestos <clears throat> there is. Asbestos can be, no pun intended, through the roof. So um, that, that could be a very costly amount of money to demolish the building. So I, I just want to make sure that that's clearly right. communicated mm -hmm. that she wouldn't be expecting just the, the initial fee that you explained. Right. Because that could get miscommunicated. Right. And so that, that both of those fees, we'd be absorbing those and then passing those on to her. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, and now definitely since the language is a barrier, maybe mm -hmm. something written right. to her lawyer or realtor and mm -hmm. her. Um, I just want to see that that happens, especially obviously if she what mm -hmm. happens is actually what it actually costs us. I mean, we're, right, and we're right. talking about estimates now. Yeah, no, I know. Right. Yeah. I know. So the lien is the amount <clears throat> of cost. Exactly. Exactly. But just that, that, that she understands. Right. I just yeah. want to make sure that we took the extra <clears throat> step to make sure she understood that um, she may have just assumed demolish and not even know, but a lot of those homes are older in that neighborhood. Well, in all of Harrisonburg, you got to check those yeah. estimates. Yeah. Okay. I'll, I'll, I'll try to explain this simply. If we vote yes on this, we are going to knock that house down, and we're going to add a, put a lien on the property for the, what it costs us to knock it down. If there is anything, it, it, and if that's fine with you, then okay, that, that, that's what will happen. If there is anything that you want to do about that, especially if we go ahead and approve this, you're going to need to keep talking to the city attorney, and you're going to need to do it very quickly because we're – not likely to wait very long on this. Yeah, sure. Sorry about that. I got uh, the letters uh, before almost uh, several years, but uh, I I read a little bit. I think that that said that house is not a safety for leave, but uh, we, we don't have plan live there. So we think uh, just uh, mention us don't leave that. Uh, like a dangerous house, so mm -hmm. I didn't uh, do anything of that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right. Uh, I came to the attorney's office uh, like uh, April or May. I forgot. April. It was late yeah, May, first May 19th, 18th, somewhere around there. Yes, and uh, yeah, they told me, yeah, I I have to do like uh, tear down that house so I start uh, like a uh, fund uh, like a building department mm -hmm. yeah right now um, I ro already released uh, like uh, HEC from HEC and uh, Columbia gas mm -hmm. um, for the water department uh, uh, building department mm -hmm. said they will do that for and the only other thing you do need in an asbestos survey, I'm pulling that, you get the releases for your utilities and then you have to provide an asbestos survey. And I think um, estimated cost and then the permit is issued for demolition. Yeah, yeah, we, we uh, find the dump trucks and um, ex cavator like a person can provide that and uh, for uh, tra like, a, like a trash or something, we, we will find a Rockingham landfill. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm. Okay. Yeah, we will wait. If I got a permit from building department, we will try do that uh, very soon. So is there a reason why you hadn't responded for all these years? I'm sorry? 
Why had you not spoken to us over the four years? Oh, I don't understand that later I show somebody else. He told me uh, the house is too old, it cannot leave, it's dangerous. So I think uh, just uh, don't leave that house. So I. So you just let it sit there? Yeah, I think I, I don't leave there, it's okay, so I didn't. Uh, Okay. Okay. Any other questions? Do you have any other questions or about anything? Um, yeah. Right now, I um, I know if I I have to tear down that. If I have any questions, yeah. I, and the uh, the people from building department they really help me. Mm -hmm. Like, uh, yeah. Right. Like I don't understand, I will bring for them. Now that show somebody else, just tell me. Oh yes, mm -hmm. okay. Okay. Anything else, Richard, that you can think of that needs to be said? I'm concerned that it won't be. I want to make sure that it's done in a healthy way. So. That was well, again, I think if we. I, I think the answer is if we approve the ordinance, the city will proceed on that. Yeah. If it can, if the city can work. With the property owner, um, right. mm -hmm. I think we'll do whatever we reasonably can to yeah to do that. But uh, obviously, if we're doing it, that's that's going to be a given. Right. right. Um, exactly. So we'll have to be satisfied. And I just want to be clear. So this has been kind of in the in the works for over four years, or this has been an issue. For I over first four visited years. this property in '08. In oh, oh nine. Oh nine. Oh nine. Okay. Uh, and I've been talking about it on and off since then. There, are, I mean, unfortunately, another aspect of it. There are a lot of good people who who live right in the immediate proximity of this property, and yeah. it has been to say it has been. I think it's safe to say this has probably been the single biggest problem property. Certainly, if you talk about residential properties in the entire city okay. over, over that time period, and we've looked at various things to try to try to do something about it. And yeah, so this is not. <coughs> Uh, not not a point that we get to happily or one that we got to in a hurry. In fact, I think there's probably some folks out there who wonder why it's maybe taking this so long, long to get, get here. And it, and it really got to the piece that, that that was the piece it was talking about that um, changed ownership. And there were some submissions, I actually believe, about some steps that were going to be taken care of to correct the, the blighted situation. And then just nothing was ever. Mm -hmm. I, if I. I there was literally a new door put on the house right away, and that was a may, may, might have been a little work done inside, and that was it. And then, then everything just ground to a halt. Mm -hmm. And that's three years ago now. Okay. <coughs> so it seems like this is something that we we kind of waited and looked at long we, enough. Well, well when, when the property changed hands, there was. There were, there were representations and there was a hope that they were going to mm -hmm. rehabilitate the property and move, move in positive directions. There were some early, very encouraging signs. And then nothing back to the point where I, I know people approach, approach me again, hey, what happened to this property? Why is it, yeah. you know, it still continues to be a real problem for, problem property for the neighborhood. So, so yeah, you got to take care of the health of those citizens in the community and we can't, I would, yeah, I wouldn't feel comfortable walking away from this conversation. Right. Leaving that in the, I, I heard you mention, Wesley, that, you know, it'd be possible for the owners to take care of the demolition and quite honestly, based off of the history and the conversation, I don't even, that's what, I don't feel comfortable with that at all. Mm -hmm. uh, to be very, that, that's why I brought up the health piece. I know if we do it, we'll do it right. Right. Mm -hmm. And we'll do it soon. Um, and I guess if that can be overseen, if the property owners do it, I guess that's okay. But I can't say that we would 100% mm -hmm. trust that. That was why I brought that piece up. I think it's about that time. Yeah, I yes, think sir. about that, that time. <clears throat> uh, may I like to make a motion to um, approve the ordinance to demolish 226 Kelly Street? Okay. Second. Any discussion? Yeah, we just, we got to take care of the health of the citizens mm -hmm. around it and the property owners that are taking care of that street. So. Okay. Roll call, please, Mary Hope. Council Member Jones. Aye. Vice Mayor Ball. Aye. Council Member Bird? Aye. Council Member Hirschman? Aye. Mayor Reed? Aye. Thank you.
Thank you. Mm -hmm. But uh, uh, I, I, not really understand. We'll get Wesley to speak to you after. Right, I'll speak to you. Okay. Okay. Sure. Thank mm -hmm. you. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, what time? I wait or later? Um, yeah, okay. if you can wait. Yeah. Okay. Thank That'd you. Be great. Uh -huh. Madam Mayor uh, Panayotis Sianakuros again. Uh, this is an opportunity to bring up an interesting technical point. Maybe it's interesting. Uh, are items that have already been worked through on the agenda no longer on the regular agenda? Uh, just a technical question to wonder about a little bit. But uh, without getting into that, uh, I think to address Mr. Barry's concern, which is a concern that a lot of people have had, uh, it, this might be a good time to have a sense of orders of magnitude the kinds of things, the kinds of costs that people in the city face. Um, I alluded earlier to the proportion of people's uh, income that is going to rent. City staff has numbers on that. That might be a good thing to look at. Some of those numbers also show how much disposable income people have left over, and that can help us think about these issues a little bit. Something that hasn't really come up uh, is uh, tax incidence, a word I used before. That is who ends up having to pay taxes for example, people will say if you put a tax on something, it will just be passed through to the consumer. If we think about that with respect to housing and rent in particular, it might be useful to note that we have a rather interesting, rather strange rental situation in Harrisonburg and that we've got a big university in the middle of the, of the, uh, of the city. I believe, and I'm not sure, this is an empirical question, but I believe that there's a sort of a price floor that is set by dorm housing. In other words, if you charge less than what the dorms are charging, you're going to fill up your property with students who may be hard on the property. So that, if that's really true, that would put a price floor on rents. On the other hand, if you try to raise rents above the salaries that are paid, for example, in the food processing industry, then you're going to get people doubling up and being creative and you're going to get empty units if they're not to a specification that maybe students with more money might like. That would put us in an interesting tax incidence situation saying that you know, it, might be, uh, it might be hard. You know, it's just, we might want to think about that tax incidence. In terms of the magnitude of how much people are paying, in 2012, uh, City Council approved a request by city staff to, that staff said would save the city maybe two or three hundred dollars maybe every year or so on foreclosed properties, which was an issue back in 2012. That change in ordinances it was a change to 10658, the Tall Grass and Weeds Ordinance. And after that change was passed, dropping maximum height from 15 inches to 12 inches, people in the city started mowing twice as much. Now, how much does that cost an average house? Angie's List says it's $1,000 to maintain your lawn if you pay a service. Let's say we started, be conservative, we started at half that because we doubled our mowing. That means you're going from 500 to 1,000. That's $500 cost imposed on people. It's something to think about. It's something to look at. The numbers are there. People started mowing more. Anecdotally, I have confirmation of what I'm seeing in the measurements. So I think it's good for us to put things in perspective and then maybe look at a little bit of history as well, which I can maybe talk about in a future time. History that I do want to note, 50th anniversary of Loving versus Virginia yesterday, a major accomplishment, a lot of work still to be done. It's also the anniversary of the shooting at the Pulse nightclub, reminding us we are not done yet with the important work that has been going on. This is something people don't know that has been going on in Virginia for a long time. Um, we in Harrisonburg were leaders in the 19th century after the Civil War in fighting for equal rights and protecting property rights when the readjuster movement was really led from right here in Harrisonburg. And one of the first things that the readjusters did when they got into the legislature, Shed Dungy in 1879 proposed a bill that later, turned, that later was won by Loving versus Virginia. And his reasoning and the reasoning of other African-American readjusters in the 79, 80, 81 legislatures was they wanted to protect the rights of women and children. They wanted to protect property rights that they had just gotten along with uh, 
defeating the Confederacy. So it's a long tradition, it's a long history, and I think we should uh, keep all of that in mind. And a, a big thing that was motivating the readjusters, by the way, was free schools, free public schools, which were in, uh, proposed in the Underwood Constitution. So thank you very much for the time. Thank you. Thanks, Polly. Mm -hmm.